Hello everyone, welcome to Chinese Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the free Windows VPS from GitHub. It's a two virtual CPU, 7 gig RAM, and with fast internet speed VPS, completely free. You have admin access to it, you can RTP to it directly. Basically, it's a GitHub hosted runner, which is used to run workflow. It has pre-installed all kinds of tools, and it's also available with Ubuntu, Linux, Windows, or Mac OS operating system. It doesn't expose the port 3389 to internet. That's why we're going to use Anglog to create a TCP port for us to connect it to. Previously, I already showed you all kinds of ways to get the free VPS using Oracle Cloud, Azure Cloud, or AWS Google Cloud, even Intel Cloud. You can find out those free VPS videos from here. But this one is definitely worth trying. If you have GitHub account, if you have Anglog account using your email address, you can register one, then you can absolutely get this free VPS to run your Windows system on it. Now let's start it. I did mention you need a GitHub account and Anglog account. Those two pre-requirements. But it also comes with a limitation. Of course, it only can exist for six hours maximum. That's because of GitHub's job run limitation for workflow. Maximum run is 360 minutes. Once six hours passed, you can rerun it and get another new instance and to run another six hours. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for long-term running VPS, then you probably need to look at the Oracle Cloud or Azure or Google Cloud to get the free VPS from my those videos. The steps also shows in my blog post, which the link is in this video's description. Check it out. So now let's start create your new Windows VPS in GitHub. First, assuming you already have GitHub account, just like what I have here, log in to your dashboard, create a new to create a new repository. You can give it a name for this new repository. I gave it for RDP. Make it a private, that's it. Then you can create your repository. After that, go to the actions. Then we're going to set up a workflow yourself. Create our own workflow, basically. In here, you will need some script, which you can find out from my blog post. You just need to copy, paste, which I already pasted in a notepad. Copy everything, put it into your new workflow, which is main.yml file. You can look at the content in this script. Basically, they're going to use a Windows image. And then they're going to download Angular log and run it with a token that we will get from our Anglog website later on. After that, basically run some script, then create a user, run the admin and the password. So you can change that if you want to make it secure. The last step, basically it map your 3389 port to the Anglog TCP port since 3389 port is not exposed to the internet at all. Once that's done, commit your changes. We create our repository. We create our workflow. Now we need to go back to settings. We're going to create our repository secret. Click on secrets and variables. That's in the security section. Click on actions. Click on new repository secret. We're going to create our repository secret. 
The secret name you can find out from here, which is the analog authentication token. And the secret, which you can find out from your analog account. As mentioned before, you will need to register your analog account by yourself using your email address. After that, you should be able to log in with your account on your dashboard first page. You should be able to get something like this. This is your OS token. After you copy it, simply paste it in, add secret. That's all configuration you will need. Now we're going to go next step to run the workflow to bring that GitHub hosted virtual machine runner up and running. Then we're going to connect to it. You can go back to your GitHub repository and go to the actions page. So you will see there's one workflow run here. You can delete this workflow run. You don't need that. And then you can rerun it. You see CI. So the workflow has a workflow dispatch, even the trigger. You can click on run workflow. Then the workflow is starting to run. It's queued. You can click on CI to see the process, how they run it. So now it's set up job. It's done. Then they download it. And then extract it. They use our OS token to authorize it. Now they run a couple of scripts, especially to enable the RDP remote desktop firewall to allow remote desktop in. After that, they're creating a tunnel. That's the last step. Before that, we see they create a user, they set up a local user, run an admin and password. So after you see this run angular.exe, on the TCP port 380 line, you should be able to go back to your end log to see your session. So go back to the endpoint. So the endpoint will show which endpoint connecting to end log right now. As you can see, we have one machine connecting to that the machine we brought up from GitHub runner. So what you need to do is copy this TCP URL. And then we're going to run MSTSC. And basically, you need to paste it in, remove TCP part, since we only need to know the host and the port. So after that, connect to it. Right away, you connect into Now you need to put the username password we created. This is runner admin, and we have password paste in. Then OK. Click Yes. So wait a bit, and then you will see this command line window, which is running some jobs. Keep this provisioner.exe window up and running. Don't close it. Once you close it, your list runner gonna be right away gonna be shut down. You can minimize it. That still will be okay. As you can see from the desktop, there's quite a few tools already installed. If you want to explore it, you can get more. As you are set up, Firefox has been installed. Python, all kinds of Python version has been installed. So this image does has lots of tools and application installed. It's in the test mode. It's a Windows Server 2022 data center version. We can look at the system. And then we can open Task Manager. So from system, you can see we have 7 gig RAM. 
It's a Windows Server 2022 data center version. You can get more details from Task Manager. We got two virtual processors, 7 gig of RAM. We have hard drive, C and D drive. Let's see how many gig bytes hard drive space we have. We got a 255 gigabyte. We already used almost 200 gigabytes already, and we have 62 gigabytes left. So one more testing about the network speed. So we're gonna use speed test.net to have a quick testing. So that's our IP, which is in Microsoft Azure Cloud. So we can gonna connect into the server in Seattle. Let's go. We are getting around 500 meg BPS for downloading. Uploading is even better. It's close to 750 meg BPS. So that's pretty fast, much faster than my home internet. As mentioned previously, you have to keep this up and running. If by accidentally you closed it, you see right away you lost the connection to your VPS. That's okay. You're gonna go back to our uh, GitHub page. Right away you see the error. The operation was cancelled. So we're gonna go back to rerun it. Go to action, CI. Then you can run the workflow again. So there's a new workflow started. Click on it. It's building. And you can see it's pretty fast. They already got into the last step, which is mapping the 3389 port to an clock port. Now we can get that port again. Gonna launch our MSTSC command and then paste in the URL, remove the TCP part. You can see the port number was changed. So as long as you got the URL, you can connect into it using the same username password. Say yes to the certification warning message. Now we log back in again. That's how you can get the free to virtual CPU, 7 gig RAM, 255 gigabytes hard drive, virtual private server in the GitHub cloud. I hope you like it. If you do, please give me a thumb up and subscribe my channel to support me. Thank you for your watching. See you in my next episode.